The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave. Welcome to Postcards, I'm Dana Johnson. Today we taste the history of Minnesota grapes as we take a look at the unique aspects of three local wineries. First, we travel to Fieldstone Vineyards at the historic Ford Garage building in downtown Redwood Falls and join in on their annual grape stomp. <laughs> Fieldstone was originally established uh, 12 miles uh, outside of Redwood Falls, uh, about four miles from Morgan, Minnesota, on a century farm. Um, planted our first vineyard in 2000 on that location. Opened uh, the winery in 2003 with the 2002 vintage, and then left that location in uh, winter of 2010 and moved into Redwood Falls at our current location. We're uh, located in a historic Ford garage. That's what it was originally built for. Uh, it was about 1920. It is uh, three stories, uh, about 9,000 square feet each, including a basement that you can drive into and was once deemed a, a fallout shelter, and uh, an upstairs that has a car elevator where they did the original assembly and some of the body work. Uh, it remained a dealership through the mid-60s, and then had uh, a variety of tenants over the last 30 years. We did the best we could with keeping the original fixtures in place. Uh, the flooring is 100 years old. Um, the, the basic layout of the front of our house is what the show, uh, show floor of the dealership would have looked like, with the exception of modern bathrooms and offices. Fieldstone's been involved with the uh, Redwood Falls Chamber of Commerce and several other sponsors the last uh, two or three years, um, putting on a uh, fall festival and grape stomp in downtown Redwood Falls. Uh, we block off several um, city blocks downtown um, that, hell, uh, that hold uh, the, uh, the grape stomp. There's uh, craft vendors that come down. There's food vendors that come down. We have a kid's grape stomp. Uh, the last couple of years, we've also had live music and uh, other, other types of entertainment throughout the, the afternoon. We really had uh, a, a fall festival that up until a few years ago was um, losing momentum, uh, I think, and the, the Grape Stomp helped to kind of revitalize uh, that particular um, event for the city. Uh, Chamber uh, also has a, a fundraiser involved um, with that uh, particular uh, uh, fall festival, so I mean, it's a great way for um, the chamber to raise funds as well. This is the third annual Grape Stomp here at Fieldstone Vineyards in downtown Redwood Falls and it has grown. We are very excited to say that we have more stompers this year and uh, we have a big cash prize for the stomp, $200 cash prize, so that probably brought in a few extra. Uh, but it's just a great feel-good community event um, that brings out a lot of people for our fall festival. Costumes are certainly encouraged, but not required for our grape stomp. Um, you'll see everything from Lucy and Ethel to people dressed as bunches of grapes. <laughs> to We've got some football stars this year that are going to be grape stomping. So brings out all kinds of people. 
One, two, three, go. We are a team. She talked me into it. Actually, her mom is one of my best friends, and um, we're camping together this weekend. And they came down, but her mom actually is doing the grill off, the grill off with the steak with um, Gina's husband John. And so we just and we're park camping, and so we just decided to she talked me into it. I think it's just wonderful that our size town has something like this, and I just think it's good just to support the town and have fun. Well, I'm going to do the stomping. I just told her, you know, I'm going to try doing on my toes, and if that doesn't work, then she's going to tell me to use my feet. Clap feet. Yeah. It will be a team effort. <laughs> wow. A grape stomp is a celebration of harvest and kind of paying homage to how things used to happen before we had electricity and mechanical uh, or machines that did processing for us. So in the way that we run the event, uh, each contestant uh, or each team rather, there's two people, will have 10 pounds of fruit to crush with their feet, nothing else, and another person that will be trying to push the liquid towards a, an exit spout and the person that captures the most liquid or the team that captures or produces and captures the most liquid will win. Uh, as far as the juice and we always get this question uh, some of the wineries do use the juice we do not it uh, all goes out to the compost pile. And we generally go through anywhere from a third to a, a half a ton of grapes uh, for the grape stop just kind of depends on how many people register, how many people day of or walk ups, stuff like that. But uh, I think this year it was right around a uh, half a ton. The, the Fall Festival and the Grape Stomp absolutely uh, draws from a, a larger area to pull people into town. Um, it's uh, you know kind of an afternoon event. Uh, we'll have couples that'll come down and stomp against one another. Uh, we might have just a, a couple that's out for a Saturday afternoon, uh, you know, that they, they left the kids at home or it's a, it's a date weekend. Um, but yeah, it absolutely draws in from uh, a pretty wide, uh, wide area, I would say, as far as uh, the Twin Cities and in, in, in the Northeast and probably down to, uh, towards Sioux Falls in the Southwest. We actually do have a kids stomp. It's part of our great kids activities sponsored by very generous local businesses. And they're down at the other end of the block. And kids stomping is completely free. This is a great event for the community. As I said, we have very generous local businesses. Um, lots of great volunteers for this event and it's something we've done for many many years this the grape stomp of course is in its third year but the fall festival has been around more than 25 years so people know that it's the fourth Saturday in September they look forward to it every year and we're just adding some new things uh, every year to get new people's attention owning and running a winery uh, allows for us to to really be exposed to a a pretty fantastic group of people. Um, folks that are coming through our front door um, are not um, having a bad day. Um, they're here to have fun. They're here to, to generally learn something. Um, and, and so you're, you're not typically uh, dealing with people that um, are in bad moods. Uh, they're all uh, pretty happy to be here and uh, that makes for fun conversation. People that come to our location are here because they want to be here, not because they have to be here. So it's very rare that we get people that are having their bad day in our location. Um, it's fun to talk to those people. In the 10 years we've been in business, we have had visitors from every state in the Union and uh, over 18 countries uh, worldwide. So we get to meet people from a lot of backgrounds and uh, said, they're happy to be here, so it's, uh, it's generally a, a fun day. Next, follow us for a fun day of wine tasting at Glacial Ridge Winery and see what goes into the production of their award-winning wines. Today we are at um, Glacial Ridge Winery in Spicer, Minnesota. We are located on Highway 23 between uh, Spicer and New London, right on the highway. We bought the property as a orchard uh, and uh, it came with uh, 17 and a half acres, uh, the buildings, 
uh, an orchard of five and a half acres. My wife always had a passion for doing something micro like this, uh, either brewery or winery. Uh, it seemed like the winery fit. We found a winemaker uh, that had been making wine for over 30 years. It seemed like all parts were starting to come together to do the winery, so that's what we did. This is Jimmy Appleseed Orchard, which still is the name of the orchard. But, and we market Jimmy Appleseed uh, during the apple season. So, uh, but basically we market Glacier Ridge Winery 12 months out of the year, and then Jimmy Appleseed uh, a couple of months. We're sitting in a building that was uh, uh, constructed in, in the 60s to actually house a wholesale mineral operation. But uh, we are sitting in a room right now, which is our wine tasting room. And uh, this is where we, you can come in and taste our wines. And, uh, and that's how we sell our wines. It does taste like rhubarb. We also created this barrel room right here for a lounge. And it is created so that you feel like you're walking inside a barrel. And that it's a nice, small, little, cozy room for a small, little group, and it works very well. Ron and Kim are wonderful people to work for. It's fun to work for a family, and it, it really does feel like it's Glacial Ridge Winery family. I always sign that at the end of all of our newsletters, and I really feel that way. Um, there's just four of us that are the core staff here, and so we work really closely together, and um, everything kind of feels like, you know, when you're having a bunch of people over at your house, and it's really exciting, and all the anticipation and stress, and then it's here, and everybody's having a good time. It, it feels kind of like I'm hosting parties at my home working here, so it's a lot of fun. Before we were marketing to greater Minnesota and now we're trying to come down to our local communities. That's our, you know, our home roots. We want, you know, people to feel welcome here, feel like this is a regular place to come for fun on Thursday nights in the summer or for grape stomp every year or just to come here and have a wine sampling. Working behind this bar, everyone's so happy to see you and so glad to be here and so interested in what you have to offer and just really having a good time. They're here to have a good time, they have a good time while they're here, and they leave to go have a good time somewhere else. So everyone comes here with this upbeat, energetic, happy, um, you can't go wrong, you can't not have fun while you're working, so that's what I love about it. I was a grocer for 30 years. But when you're behind this bar and you're doing tasting with people that come in and never bring in their problems, it's one of the funnest places I've ever had to work is, being a, is, is letting people taste what we have uh, come up with and uh, watching their expressions and, um, and basically they leave just a slightly happier than when they came in. No one ever brings their problems in here and they leave a little happier. It's one of the best experiences I can remember in the working world is being behind this tasting bar. I'm Lynn Rasmussen. I'm from Florida. We're from the Villages, Florida. It's a really wonderful winery and you should come and try the wines. They're really good. We enjoyed it. It's a wonderful experience. Right now, sitting here in uh, September, mid-September, we are fermenting grapes up in the production area, up in the pavilion. So that's what you do smell. And uh, that, has a, that has a odor of its own, and some people like it, some people don't. Fermenting is when we actually add a, a certain kind of yeast to the, to the grapes uh, with the nutrient that uh, will turn the sugar of that grape into alcohol. And we turn then grapes into wine. This is the first piece that the grapes actually go through. And this is called a crusher destemmer. And what it does, it actually draws grapes down into the body of this crusher destemmer. It actually relieves the grapes from the stem and actually crushes the grape. Then what we possibly would do is move it into the press the next day. And that's what this is. This is a grape press, and it is a bladder press. And what you do is you fill inside this uh, cage with grapes, and shut the cover, 
And then we start to fill this bladder in with air. And what it does is it expands like a big balloon. And what it does is it pushes the grapes to the outside, in, inside to the outside of the screen, and actually it forces then the juice out of the grape. Then after we feel our wines are ready to bottle, then we would uh, use this machine first to bottle. Uh, this is a bottling machine. And what it does is it has a pump on the bottom, which actually fills this reservoir up here, which holds about four cases of wine. And then it actually gravity feeds into the bottle. So we actually put the bottle in each one of these and we fill six at a time. My wife uh, is my, kind of my label developer. Uh, she has a lot of fun with it and she'll uh, get up at two in the morning and go and tweak on the computer and I think I got it honey I think I got it you know and so it's a lot of fun to watch her go at it and uh, she does an excellent job on our labels. I think it's really exciting to tell people when they ask if we have Minnesota grapes that yeah we do it actually if you look behind you we have posters of the University of Minnesota grapes that they've discovered it's cool to say that the University of Minnesota discovered how to keep these grapes going. They made their own varieties and now we literally, the state, owns those grapes. They were developed here, they are grown here, and now we use them here to make wines and I think that's a really exciting thing to show people and tell people because people don't really think about grapes being grown here in Minnesota. So cold climate grapes are now in existence and that's what makes wineries in Minnesota becoming more popular. One thing we us Minnesotans like to do is we don't like to go across to the east or the west of uh, this continent and try to compare our tastes to them. It's same way with apples, same way with grapes. We will have our own taste so we have to market our own taste and, uh, and that's what's happening. We as Minnesota wineries do work together in order to promote our grapes that uh, we can grow. We have fantastic wines. It's exciting to hear people say, I've tried all of your wines and there's not one I don't like, so how am I supposed to decide? <laughs> so um, to try something local and to get a feel for this area. And if you're from this area, just to be a part of a really exciting up and coming local attraction. Now take a look at the history behind Morgan Creek Vineyards as we step into their underground winery in New Ulm. We found this piece of property actually looking for firewood and um, we came upon the fact that this place was for sale and instead of buying firewood that day, we purchased a 10 acre farm site along the Morgan Creek. My husband George and I have always been interested in agriculture and gardening and so we wanted to use the land in some way that, uh, that would follow along those lines of interest that we had. We opened the winery in 1999, built it in 98 and uh, it took a while before we got our vineyard established to, um, uh, to decide to go ahead with the winery itself. We were really going to just grow grapes and enjoy living here in this nice little piece of property in southern Minnesota. But um, my husband, whose background is in the beer business with the Augustel Brewing Company, he said, well, if we're going to grow grapes, we might as well make wine. Augustel um, uh, was my great-great-grandfather. Augustel uh, arrived in this country coming from the Black Forest area in Germany, a little town of Durbach, and uh, it's along the Rhine, and it happens to be in the middle of the uh, Baden wine growing area in Germany, and uh, the town is on a little creek and surrounded by hillsides that are covered with grapevines. <laughs> and uh, so August Schell uh, came from this area when he moved to Minnesota here to be part of this uh, New Ulm community. So he was obviously, uh, you know, uh, a wine lover at heart. And when he had the chance, he, uh, he did put in some grapevines. And so we got a little history to there. And uh, we feel kind of proud now that uh, myself here as being a great, great grandson here have actually now totally connected the family back into wine on a commercial basis. The, the preservation of a wooden 
barn here is for us was a great opportunity to preserve some some history of the of the area. This is part of the, um, the uniqueness of who we are and what we want to be about here at Morgan Creek Vineyards is preserving the history that's here, uh, preserving the landscape as well as the architecture that uh, originated here years ago. The barn for me uh, kind of represented again uh, another uh, element from the past and uh, and feel some connections with uh, what's gone on before and in particular Paul and I uh, both uh, appreciate the, you know the beauty that you see that comes out from that history and you have a I think an innate desire to uh, want to hang on to some of that stuff and to make use of what you had even if it's not in all that great a shape. <laughs> As George thought through it he he went back to the basics and he said, well, how was wine made, you know, centuries ago? They didn't have great big facilities that, you know, uh, manage production. And, and uh, you realize that years ago, wine was, was uh, fermented by digging holes in the ground and lining them, the ground with clay casks. So the clay casks was, were submerged, covered, and the fermentation process actually went on underground so that there was a constant temperature something that was uh, not variable, especially in hot climates, in the mid-eastern climates, uh, uh, where it's very hot. So um, he started thinking underground. He kind of thinks like that, <laughs> different ways of analyzing things. Uh, so we, we proceeded with um, the plans for building underground, and we've never regretted it since. It's, we built smaller than we probably would now, uh, but we use the space very efficiently, plus we're using our outdoor areas. Our portico is a wonderful space for gathering. We, we preserved all of the stone from the original barn that was here. We used it all in our landscaping here, which is a challenge too. It's been a great decision, I think, to do that. And it's been unique uh, for marketing purposes. We're the only underground winery in Minnesota. <laughs> we're striving also to become a uh, family business where we can pass this on to the next generation. Our kids are interested and all of them uh, have been involved in one way or another. Um, our son Adam right now, we're happy, to, very happy that he's the, he's the one full-time position here that we've been able to fund. <laughs> our son Ben, uh, he just completed the ninth crush that he did. He's our lead crush person. He is a musician, however, full-time musician, uh, works in the region making his living that way. And so he also is our artist in residence here at the winery. He performs here every Wednesday night, or uh, Friday night, for Wine Down for the Weekend, which is a, a venue of classical and jazz piano that he does. It's hard to describe, but uh, when you taste the wine, <laughs> that uh, really uh, uh, touches you. It's just like, oh, <laughs> there's, there's so much more. It's like it opens up a whole new world for you. and. Um, uh, and wine and pairing it with foods and so on and, and so on and you can discover all of these things where all of a sudden that wine just makes something way more <laughs> than the combination of just a food and a drink. So I feel really it's part of our mission as well in education and our tours and what we do is to help people understand wine as, as uh, George would express it as a wisdom, uh, uh, wisdom art where uh, a skilled winemaker will take uh, the quality uh, of fruit that's expressed from a particular landscape uh, and carry its essence and its, its uh, expression through production stages into the final, uh, final vessel, which is the bottle. One of the other unique parts of what we do is to make food and uh, Minnesota cuisine a part of this experience of, of the art, artistic, artistic side of, of wine, uh, wine making. Um, because we believe wine is part of a lifestyle, food is, uh, is an essential component. We have a Valoriani oven, which is an Italian-made oven. It's a commercial oven. The flavor that the oven provides is wonderful. It goes great with wines. Perfect. It's a perfect pairing. We just finished our, um, uh, our wine pairing uh, evening with our chef. We work locally with uh, Kim's Cuisine, Kim Ernest. It's really hard work to get the best pairing, but when you find the right food with the right wine, you get that magic chemistry that comes together, 
and it enhances the wine, it enhances the flavors of the food, and when that happens, it's, um, it's an aha moment. It's just wonderful. It's, it's a magical experience that you get, and that's, and that's, and that's what I think um, all people that like wine, that that's what they're looking for. And, um, and you don't find it everywhere. Being a fifth generation a brewery, a business, uh, and, and uh, participating in that, uh, after a while you just <laughs> discover the fact that that's a very unusual situation and uh, it gives you a lot of uh, pause for pride in the fact that uh, the family has hung together and, and kept going uh, a business through good times and bad times uh, and, um, and been able to uh, continue that on now. That's all for this week. For more information, go to our website. See you again next time on Postcards. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave. Uh...